Good evening, uh, Judge Bartman. Good evening, CJ. Good evening, members of the panel. Typical of a judge, I'm sure you are relaxed. You don't need to be uh, caused to relax. I'm fine, thank you, CJ. Thank you. You've been a judge of the High Court for how long now? For seven years. And um, for how many terms did you act as a judge of the Supreme Court of Appeal? I started on the 1st of June two th last year, and I'm still acting. I've heard a few judges complain that it's not quite easy to acclimatize to the Supreme Court of Appeal environment. What, is that your experience, or did you experience it differently? My experience was uh, fair. Um, I, I had more problems acclimatizing to Bloemfontein, but at the court I was fine. Is that the heat problem? <laughs> yes. And the support from colleagues? Excellent. Um, you took one of my greatest supporters, Judge Nschlanschla, away from me. I, I had excellent support from colleagues. Yes. Well, apart from the few questions I've asked you, just in your own words, impress us a bit. Why you? Because I have been spent my entire life, working life, in the courts. I started as a prosecutor. I don't know if you want to see, go yes. me through. No, I've that. seen that. Okay. Yes. I started there. Then I was a magistrate, a regional court prosecutor. A divorce court. A, a divorce court. Then I was at the People's Family Law Center, which took me a bit out of court, but I was working in the court environment all that time, um, assisting women and children with domestic violence, maintenance, and giving advice. Um, then I started at the NPA, where I was then drafting for the High Court, appearing in the High Court, and then I started as a acting judge and remained a judge until now. My experience has been in the courts and at the SCA you asked to look at what has happened in the courts. So I have the ability, I most certainly have the years of experience and there's nothing wrong with my work ethic. What is it about the Supreme Court of Appeal or the way it does, it goes about its business that you think requires some improvement? I, the, the, the court itself is a, a very, it's, it's very structured. The work you do there is structured. Um, improvement in the sense of I think it's the, the way people work, the way people interact with each other, and new people, new blood always brings a different attitude towards work. But most certainly, the one thing you do need is the ability to work hard, consistently, and that I bring with me. And um, has a term ever gone by without you delivering your judgment? There was At the SCA? Uh, the, there uh, was in, in line with the established practice? Um, the, there was one judgment um, we, we delivered in, in the next term, uh, but that was, the judgment is in here, it's reported, and that there was a lot of research that needed to be done in that judgment. Yes. Yes. Thank you. President Badi? Thank you, Chief Justice. Good evening. Judge Bartman. Good evening, President. <clears throat> uh, what is it in the SCA that you believe you've been there now for what, uh, three terms? Three terms, yeah. yeah. That happens mm. there that you don't like and what you like. Okay. Um, it's very different to sitting in your own chambers and writing a judgment and delivering a judgment. You know, it's very different. You have three to five people who have an input in your judgment. That takes getting used to, getting used to people's different styles and attitudes towards your way of writing. Um, but th that is nothing that one can't overcome. Um, I have the people skills to deal with that. Okay, uh, and, and you like that part? Yes, I do. 
Anything that you don't like that you'd like to see improve? The only thing that I would like to see improve is when one is at, um, during the recess, that at the High Court you have access to a chambers and a proper library. That would make the reading, the site, much easier. Okay, but that is between you and the Judge President of the Western Cape, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. yes. Now, the SCA is all about reading records uh, and heads of argument and then sitting in court, listening to argument, participating and so forth, yeah. getting out and the, the person who has been allocated a judgment to write the judgment after the deliberations. Um, what would you say has your experience been with regard to the hearing uh, of, uh, of an appeal in the SCA? Uh, Have you been allowed to participate uh, to the fullest? Yes, I have. In, in fact, um, after my second term, one of the senior judges came to me and congratulated me on the way that I have been participating. Um, sometimes you get a bit ahead of yourself um, because I'm used to being in the court by myself, but uh, you learn to live with the other people on the bench. It's like every day is a full bench instead of only Fridays like we have in the High Court. What do you mean when you say sometimes you get ahead of yourself? Um, when I say sometimes you, you, you get ahead of yourself, you, you interrupt counsel and, um, you know, just wait your turn to ask the question. Um, you, you always, for my, speaking for myself, when you have a question, you want to get it out there so that the kind of question is answered. Um. Okay. okay. Um, and then you come out of court having participated, <coughs> as you just mentioned, you go to the senior judge's chambers. Yes. And how have you found uh, the deliberations there? Uh, I have fully participated in it. Sometimes I had to start first. Um, it's difficult when you the number five and and you're the last person to talk. Um, if you agree and you don't have a different view, then there is very little to say. But I've been fortunate on cases that I've been asked to start. Okay. You, you have been asked to start? Yes, I have been asked yes. to start. Okay. Um, I personally haven't sat with you on many occasions. In no. fact, this last term I was on leave, so I didn't uh, sit with you at all or with anybody else. Yeah, that's court. correct. Uh, but I suppose you realize that uh, then comes the writing of the judgment. Your judgments that you have written, have they been acceptable to colleagues? Have they been criticized? Have they been worked on? What is uh, your experience there? I, let's just start now. I'm, in every judgment, a colleague has a comment. Some of it I've accepted, others I have not. I've had occasions where I differed from a colleague on what the colleague would suggest. I had then discussed that issue with a colleague and we'd always been able to amicably resolve the issue. Well, have you had an occasion where you've written a dissent or you've been in the minority? Yes, I have. Um, the last judgment that I wrote, well, um, I was the scribe and I was in the, man, uh, the also the dissent. Two of us dissented. Okay, that, let's put it this way. You were the scribe. I was the scribe <coughs> and you, part you, of the dissent. You wrote a judgment. Yeah. And did somebody else then write? Uh, for the majority. Yes. Well, let me, let me ask this way. Um, was the dissent 
already apparent at the discussions after the sitting in court? Yes, yes, it was. Or, or was it after you had delivered, or rather, whether you after you had given your first draft to the no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, you see, there I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm interrupting you. The dissent was um, apparent in our deliberations. Uh, two of us were going one way and the rest the other. Because I was the appointed scribe, I then had to write first. And the presider said, you might be able to convince the rest of us. Um, the two of us couldn't convince the rest, and then somebody else wrote another judgment for the ma majority. And uh, what do you think now? Do you think that the minority was correct? You see, it's a judgment that came... I want to say, tell us more about the judgment. Actually. Yes, I want to. Um, the, a farmer killed a farm worker with a, a hook a high hook, the magistrate, a uh, regional magistrate, found that he had committed murder. The matter went on appeal and two judges of the Kimberley High Court found that it was murder. The matter came to the SCA, two judges of the SCA found that it was murder. And three judges said it was culpable homicide. So. I wrote my judgment that way. Um, the senior who concurred with me wrote a concurring judgment, and the other party write for the majority. So there was five of us who thought one way. When you say five, you mean the two judges the, in the, the provincial division? The regional well. magistrate, the two judges in the high court, and two of us. Yes. All right. All right. Um, uh, I, I understand you saying that uh, you and another senior colleague found that this was murder. Yes. And the others found that it was culpable homicide. Culpable homicide. Besides the conclusion that it's murder, culpable homicide, where was the difference? That was the where difference. Where did you differ in well, the reasoning before you got to this <coughs> is culpable homicide and the other side this is murder? As I think we were always on different sides all through the reasoning. Um, I'm, I'm trying to establish what was in the reasoning that you differed with. Well, uh, first of all, the, uh, in order to get to culpable homicide and that the they could get to it easily, we were quite convinced, and I still am, that if you just look at the, the weapon that was used, the manner in which the assault happened, that subjective foreseeability was there, and then that there was the reconciliation with it, and that gives you murder in the, with, in the form of dolus eventualis. The other side of completely different view. The other three, as I said, there were five of us with the same view. All right. Um, I wasn't there this last term. Yeah. So I've canvassed the views of, of colleagues with regard to all the candidates that yeah. have made themselves available. <coughs> and the view that I have is that you still need some honing, as it were, some more acting stints in the SA. What do you say to that? I d absolutely don't agree, otherwise I would not be here. If you look at my years in the court itself, and I mean, I'm not talking about the SEA, I'm talking about the courts. I literally grew up in the courts. Uh, the fact that I differed on this one does not mean that I need more honing in the SEA. I wrote a well-reasoned judgment. Uh, I can today still justify my reasoning in the court. Okay, I think I'm fine. It's okay. Thank you. Commissioner Nyambi. Evening, Judge Padma. Good evening. Can you share with us your individual contribution uh, to advance 
the contribution of female advocates, especially the historically disadvantaged? I got an email from one of our researchers who is now, I got it last week. She is in London at the moment. She started off as, when I met her, she was legally qualified, she was a researcher. Um, with mentoring and helping and assisting, she is now in London. She is doing a master's. She wrote me a long email and said, your guidance, your assistance has helped me. Thank you very much. That's the one. As a advocate at the MPA, when I was at the asset forfeiture unit, it was my duty to guide young advocates, help them draft, take them to court, and that I did for a very long time. Also, as on the bench, you have the duty to assist young counsel. Do you believe in judicial activism? Um, do I believe in, I'm sorry? Judicial activism. That's a very, <laughs> um, judicial activism in this, as long as we stay within the bounds of the law, the constitution makes provision for the court to do that, and where necessary, I have done that. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner Nyambi. Uh, Commissioner Nsebeza. Just, just one question or a couple of questions. Good morning, Judge. Good mo oh, morning. <laughs> well, well, already in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> good evening, Judge. Good evening. Um, There, there are two positions, and uh, there are quite a number of of people who have, uh, who have made themselves available. Now, I believe that you were there when uh, uh, Judge Mshantla was a member of that court. Yes, I was there. I started uh, off when she was there. Yes, and. Um, So there is one female away from from that court. Yes. Um, I just wanted to find out wha whether you you are proficient in any of the African languages spoken in that area. Unfortunately, uh, not. Oh, okay. All right. Um, are you proficient in any African language at all? No, I'm not. I, it's only English and Afrikaans. Only English and Afrikaans. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Singh. Thank you, Chief Justice. Good evening, Judge. Good evening, Commissioner. I, I think uh, looking at your employment, you, you're quite right. You, you've spent about 30 years in the legal environment. Yes. Which is noteworthy. But I'm, I'm just looking from the time that you were appointed acting judge in October 2008. Yeah. Uh, so you've been around for about seven years now, acting and a judge. And a judge, yeah. And then in June 2015, you went to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yeah. Were you invited there or did you apply? I was invited. By the uh, president at that time? By the president at the time, yes, yeah. And, and, I'm just, I just want to know from you honestly, do you think you have enough experience for that kind of situation, Supreme Court of Appeal, having been a judge for just seven years? But yes, I do, b because bear in mind, before that, I was also a magistrate. I was a regional court magistrate. All my working life was in the courts. And the Supreme Court of Appeal gets their work from the lower courts. Every judgment that is dealt with the, was dealt in the lower courts. Well, thank you for that, but, but just you said earlier on, it's a different 
environment there that the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yes, it's a different environment. The High Court was also for me a different environment from the Magistrates Court. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Malema. Thanks very much, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, when I heard that uh, the people who are coming here are judges, I was very happy because uh, it gave me an opportunity to ask questions where I'll be educated about uh, some concepts which you, you guys are using. And uh, some of the colleagues I work with, they are deliberately trying to distort them. I want to understand, when they say a person has behaved inconsistent with the Constitution, what do they mean? When you behave inconsistent with the Constitution, you've done something against the direct prescripts of the Constitution. And then when you have breached the Constitution, is there a difference? You've done the same thing. The Constitution tells you to do one thing and you've done something else. So behaving inconsistent with the Constitution and in breach of the Constitution is the same thing? Yes. So uh, what does the oath of office mean for judges? What, when you take an oath of office, when wh what are the issues that are raised in the oath of office for judges? The oath of office for judges oblige them to uphold the constitution of the law, the law of this country, which is the highest the constitution, without fear or favor and without prejudice to anyone. So if I say to you, you failed to uphold, defend and respect the constitution, I effectively mean you have breached an oath of office. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Malema. Commissioner Mudimela. Thank, thank you, thank you, Chief Justice, uh, Judge Bartman. Uh, let me let me start with a, a, a on a light note. In, in answer to Commissioner Sebens about um, which African languages you speak, you said none. Yeah. You only speak English and Afrikaans. Can't. I thought Afrikaans was an African language. <laughs> Wouldn't you classify it as such? Developed on the continent and. Okay, you uh, spoken nowhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need not answer that. Thank you. <laughs> um, much more on the on the serious side. Um, I, I ask you to comment that I'm a, I marvel at uh, your sense of judicial independence, that you have the strength of your conviction as an acting judge. AJA uh, to differ and descend from uh, three sitting sitting judges. Commissioner, I've got the authority now. You are commending her. Please just test her suitability. <laughs> Put a question to test her suitability. I was going to test how she reacts that, to no, commendation. No, there was Even a, no, <laughs> no it, do, it doesn't help on the suitability area. Please, colleagues. Uh, CJ, thank you very much. You. Uh, uh, the point is made. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Helens. <coughs> thank you, Chief Justice. Judge, there are some, and I don't make this my own accusation, but there are some that would say that a hearing at the SCA is not only unduly comfortable, which maybe is justified, but blunt and counsel are not given the opportunity fully to develop their arguments without being overly interrupted. If, if that accusation were to be made about the SCA, what would your response be? It differs from hearing to hearing. Um, there are times, I've been there, um, when the issues are very narrow and the court, uh, the presider gives the direction that that's, those are the issues when counsel 
would have wanted to do something more. But then it's upfront told to council that these are the issues that, as the court sees it. Thank you, Commissioner Helens. Uh, Judge President Como. Um, uh, Judge uh, Bartman, you were in the aspirin judges um, course that lasted for about a year and, and six months. Would that be correct? That is correct. I was in the first course. Yes. And did you find that beneficial? It was very beneficial. <coughs> it was immediately thereafter that I started acting, or not immediately, but pursuant there too, I started acting and then never left the bench. Yes. And um, the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal asked you about a case emanating from Kimberley. I must say that I didn't sit in that case. <coughs> um, that state versus Van Skalkweg, I read the case. Yes. Um, your approach and the approach of Judge Willis yeah. was that after the concession by the appellant's counsel, yeah. what remained was the version of the state. Would that be generally correct? That is generally correct. Um, although after the concession, the concession only related to whether the accused subjectively foresaw that the weapon could cause a fatal injury. What needed to be decided was whether he reconciled himself with it. And it was myself and Judge Willis who said, we don't even need that concession, but with that concession, that is the rest of the argument that needed to be dealt with in the judgment. Yes, and um, a, a last aspect on that. The um, instrument itself, the weapon um, that caused the death of the deceased yeah. was photographed there's a hook and a shaft. Yes. And um, um, the majority suggested that part of the reasoning was that that is not ordinarily a weapon like a knife um, or some other weapon that uh, a, an assailant attacks yeah. someone with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what, 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 what uh, did the minority say about that aspect, particularly Judge Willis? Can I just, I have a photograph of the weapon with me in color. Uh, CJ, uh, if, no, if it, you'd like to it, see it. it. it uh, to save time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. To save time. Time. Okay, but and that is the last aspect. Okay, Judge Willis's argument, with which I fully agree, was that stones were not made for killing. Um, there are various weapons with which people are killed, and they are not made for killing. The same as this weapon was not made for killing, but you use it, it in that manner. You subjectively, it is. You, you cannot not subjectively foresee that it can be fatal. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, JP. Uh, Judge Bartman, you're excused. Thank you. Did I, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I cancelled uh, the president. Uh, he came after um, a Commissioner no case, so I didn't give you a chance. Uh, okay. Commissioner, it's your turn. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Um, <coughs> Judge, uh, there's always a term used uh, by the SCA. It appears almost in many SCA judgments. But when I read from the constitutional court judgments, it doesn't appear. Why is it necessary to refer to a judgment from the high court as a judgment of the court below? Okay. 
Uh, for one, it is the court below, and it very often is not the court in which the trial um, was conducted. The trial was some. The trial court could be a regional court, like in the Fitzgerald matter. The regional court was the trial court, and the appeal court was the court below the regional court. And that is how it's referred to either the court a quo or the court below. When we're dealing with the three courts, it, it's easier to identify which court you're referring to. If, if for instance, the SCA, I mean, sorry, the Constitutional Court, when dealing with a judgment to, from the SCA were to say, this judgment uh, from the court below, would you be comfortable? It is the court below. <laughs> All right, the last question. There has been over some time, there has been over some time, some uh, outcry that uh, the judiciary in the course of interpreting the law overstamp itself and enter into the terrain of the other arms of the government. What do you think? should be the necessary curbs that must be applied in order to safeguard such uh, uh, perceptions or to um, make, ensure that that doesn't happen? We really have it all in place. The different arms of government and the are all everyone's duty is quite clearly distinguished and spelled out in the Constitution. It is the judiciary for the, the, that arm to make sure that other arms and any piece of legislation conforms. Uh, I don't think we will ever quite be 100% on the same side, especially if a judgment goes against a party. Thank you, Judge Bartman, you're excused. Thank you very much. Uh, as you leave there, Commissioner uh, Nogesi, it, it was worse in the past. They were called inferior courts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.